Pick up your gear and open your chests. Throw on your armor and head out on a quest. Hey, hey. It's a brand new day. Hello. Hello. Okay. Uh, yeah. okay. Hi. Yeah. I was muted. What? <laughs> Hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome to episode 11 of season 15 of Rivals of Waterdeep. Holy crap. Wow. Not impossible. That makes no sense. It's I wow. No, I refuse. It's, it's the Penny Epi. We did oh episode 11. God. But this Damn. one feels. Have we? We've no. never had an episode. I don't think so. Okay, okay. This, yeah, this is so. this is the first in a. Oh wow! wow. Yeah, no, this is... stop! No. <laughs> <laughs> For the first and the very last time, welcome Yay. to episode 11 of a season of Rivals of Waterdeep. <laughs> yeah, <thank> you. <laughs> you know what? I did not come here for this emotional damage today. Uh, I oh, am all oh, I have bad news. Yeah, last. okay. Yeah. No, oh, well, uh, let me go write that. Hold on. Yeah, right. <laughs> While you do that, welcome, everybody. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, this week, you have the, I don't know, uh, pleasure, privilege, uh, unfortunate situation it depends there uh it to have there it is to have me and brian back behind the dm screen yeah. uh so we'll go around and we will introduce ourselves uh that everyone that's here today uh and and get on with it uh and i'll start because i started talking i want to shake everything up because the dm i think usually goes last although to be honest i've lost track mm -hmm. um i'm no i'm okay i am dm jazzy hands uh when i am playing my rivals character i will be playing kent uh our tiefling phantom rogue bard Oh, that's me. Hi, yeah. I'm Brian. I'm Urban Bohemian. I am playing Virgil, our Asimar Sorcerer, except today I'm also probably playing other people and I mean, co-DMing. So. <laughs> oh, you know, I was just going to, every scene's going to have Virgil in it. That's, <laughs> Virgil is going to be the NPC for every vignette. Anyway, Virgil's Virgil. pronouns are he, him, mine are he, they, and you and I will be voicing a myriad of other characters with their own pronouns. Uh, Tanya. Hi, I'm Tanya. Sleet. I play Sleet's Astorio. Your paladin ranger with the skosh of Bard, a.k.a. John Wickism, uh, here today for this first and last episode 11. Uh, pronouns are she, her, both for myself and Celise. Woo! Latina. Gee, I'm sorry, I just there was a message in chat that just wrecked me emotionally. Yep. <laughs> Hello, I'm Latia. <laughs> I'm playing Dahani, everybody's favorite Eric Coker monk. And if she's not... God. Where have you been for six for nine seasons? Yes, absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah, truly. 
<laughs> uh, her pronouns are she, her, mine are also she, her. Huzzah. Masood. Hello. I'm Masood. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I play Gosric Nomrad, who's everyone's favorite socialist, businessman, druid, construct. And if you're not up to date on that last part, well, you got to catch up on this season. Um, but uh, but his pronouns and mine, like I said, are he, him. And uh, Sharif. Hey, and I'm Sharif. Uh, he, him. I'll be playing Shaka, Tiefling, Celestial, Warlock. Um, also he, him as well. And uh, episode 11, L- looking forward to it. I'm glad someone is. Mm. No. Just, just Shaka, just yeah. Shaka. That's it. Listen, Shaka got married last time, so that's like, true. No. He, yeah, no, he happy. It's good. It's good. Um, yeah. That's who. That's who we are. Uh, we should probably. Uh, who are honestly, all of I feel, you? I, yeah, no, not every single one of individually. you individually. Mm-hmm. Thank you time. for coming in. Um, I feel bad because we're basically going to sh- throw it back to Sharif because you know who we are now. Let's talk about some of the people who make it possible for us to do what we do. Sharif. Oh, no, no, no. Never, ne- never feel bad about uh, Adri. Never, never. We love shouting out all the folks who've been here with us through this journey. Uh, and now this is their first episode 11 as well. Mm-hmm. We're all sharing the, this experience. Um, let's start with D&D Beyond. Um, we have all our character sheets online digitized. We have access to spells encounter management dice rolls um access to uh story content all that stuff um it has been really really great and it's really been uh keeping rivals running uh smooth throughout all 15 seasons so make sure to check them out at dndbeyond.com um and if you're listening live there'll be a giveaway in chat as well um so make sure to look out for the code word to enter the raffle um must be present to win um, and you'll be able to win some of that cool sourcebook content that uh, we've been uh, using and modifying and that kind of stuff through, through our seasons as well. So dndbeyond.com, l- 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 literally here from day one. So good stuff from them. Um, also sponsored by Die Hard Dice. I'll check them out at dieharddice.com um for virgil uh that that's what every, every, everyone says oh no th- there's like one that's everyone's no orgasm. everyone's dice will say for for, for, for virgil. virgil everyone <laughs> Every everyone says one. for virgil on it got it Ooh. um and if you use the code arrivals you get 10 percent off of your uh order there um as you as you as you as you covers the name uh-huh. I, I, I said virgil i just my hand was in a bad it's, place but definitely right, says virgil. Right, right, right. absolutely this is virgil for, in latin or anyone um and if you'd like some uh, geeky gear around your place, check out Stormcrow, uh, shop.stormcrow.com. Pick up some masks, some mugs, some shirts, um, all kind of cool stuff to make your place look more awesome. And if you use the code Rivals there, you get 15% off of your uh, purchase. Um, if you want to sound oh so silky smooth like the Rivals crew, check out Blue Microphones, crew.bluemike.com slash Rivals. Um, any purchases that you make there will give us some credit. Um, and, um, you know, it just makes you, your uh, show sound and look better. Yeah. Um, and we're also partnered with Idol Champions by Codename Entertainment. Um, all of our characters are in the game. Kent Virgil, Shaka Sleece, Tahani Gajic, as well as Disco, Pest, and Fenris as familiars. Uh, make sure to add as many rivals onto your group as you can because you get stacking bonuses, all that good stuff. And if you type es- 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 exclamation code in the chat, you get a free Electrum chest as well to help you gear up. And we also may have a voice mod uh, contributor uh, as well. We do not have a voice no. mod contributor <laughs> as well. Not as well. No, nope. these voices as that are lovely well. cannot oh. be found in voice oh. mod. They're all ours. What? <laughs> Mm-hmm. I was gonna contribute, but okay, I I, was, I, I, I I literally was gonna go. I was like, "Oh, Brian went low. I have to go high." Yeah, I understand exactly. the logic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I was caught. I was like, "Oh, do I do a celebrity impression now?" <laughs> I do. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, how's my Leno? Let me try. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Wait, was that the end of the ads? I've lost track of the order of them now. Yes. Yeah, okay, great. It. Cool. Well, that means we pass it next on to our whoosh captain, Latia. Everyone, please prepare your whooshing apparatuses for oh. the whoosh. This is the one time I stretch Everyone, a week. This is good. Get ready to whoosh. Please whoosh responsibly. <laughs> we, the rivals, are n- we, I, rival, am not responsible <laughs> for improper whooshing. 
Thank you. Previously on Rivals of Waterdeep. Whoosh. Whoosh. Very good. <laughs> now, does Rival actually fly in like a... Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. A lot of those, a lot of those weird marks in the cabin were from Walter whooshing improperly. So yeah. <laughs> check yourself. Mm -hmm. Rival's yeah. like, no, I don't do a barrel roll. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> So what Arrow happened last time? I, al <laughs> I already sort of uh, sort of spoiled it when I was uh, commenting on Sh on Shaka. But what happened last week, y'all? Somebody got married. Somebody got married. married. <laughs> yeah, we we had to check out this bride to be like who is we this? did. We finally met her at the beginning um, of the episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shaka brought Dara to Troll School um, as a prospective uh, wedding venue. Mm -hmm. Um, he's trying to hide it and make it seem like he tried to orchestrate something with Duo or try to make a good presentation. Um, uh, I believe everyone was like doing something extremely awkward to meet a first person, like like the like the honey. I don't know, somebody was screaming at someone. There was there was chaos going on when. Oh yeah, uh, it was it was the worst first impression yeah, exactly. ever. I I love the fact that Dara was very much like no. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. And but, and like, I definitely had plans for an alternate location. Yeah. Uh, but but uh Kent Kent uh, put his foot down and he was like, ah. No, uh I think it it was exactly awkward, but also perfectly rivals to for Dara <laughs> yeah. to see yeah. us like that. Because yeah. I mean it's best to just get it out of the way now. It's true. Yeah. She <laughs> needs to know. To be fair, yeah. we only showed her one duo, so like we were putting our <laughs> best foot forward in only some Only one duo. Way. We like we didn't even show her the, the light like the a ghost. portal to Avernus. Yeah, exactly. Right. We didn't talk about the portal. <laughs> um, you know, we didn't talk about the probably slowly emptying dragons horde lair in the in the basement. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. We kept oh, in the slide though, right? We kept the slide, didn't we? The what? I mean, somebody came down the slide at some point. Yeah. Mm. Okay. There's a slide. We made a slide to the dragon, yeah. to the baby yeah. dragon. Yeah. 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 Right. No, I thought you meant a, a slide that was not there, that there was just like a slide somewhere oh. on the outside Ooh. or we built, inside of. We Chelsea. built a slide for Dara to come in on during the processional. Yeah. Uh, I, actually, my brain again, went to She was not slides. into it. <laughs> <laughs> but I. Like, what did we use for the underbelly? Was that where we put the kids' room for, uh, like, for kids the table? actual? No, that's yeah, where we was... had the outdoor air. Anyway, so last <laughs> week we planned a wedding yeah. for Shaka at um, Troll Skull, and it was great. Beautiful. Things like people like Lairn and Jerry the Fractal and Clippy the other Fractal all came and helped us out, uh, and and uh, and it was great fun. But uh, you know. Weddings bring up a lot of emotions. And so while many of us were uh, planning and prepping and decorating and um, being bridezillas without actually being the bride, hi, it me. Uh, <laughs> Elise was out having a little moment of her own. Yes, yeah, she was. She was like, mm, this not for me. Nope. Knows her feelings. Don't like that. <laughs> I was out in the woods. Like, yeah. Jesus. Yep. Went out. Uh, did you see, I can't, do you speak, was, uh, was Kevin out there with you or does Kevin only talk to Rival? I don't think Kevin nope. appeared. Okay. Kevin did no, not appear to you. Okay. Kevin so just Rival and Walter. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, uh, okay, Rival, I guess we'll go talk to Walter. And then we found Walter spying on us like a creep. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> he was no, peering through the he window. Was, he was uh, peering he was, through the outdoor window. Absolutely yeah. spying on the rivals, which, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it was technically, it's it's the wedding of the town. You know what I mean? Or the wedding of the ton, actually. And uh, it, it, you can't imagine the amount of people who wanted to get involved. They wanted to be a part okay, of it. Okay, you're so giving Walter a little too much credit right now. I don't well, know if I you're think... talking as Masood or as... No, 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 no. This is a chaos demon, actually. No, uh... I think you are giving Walter a lot of credit because, like, Walter, when when Solis caught, um, bird-handled Walter, he kind of admitted. He was mm -hmm. like, the Field Ward Guild didn't work out. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a little unmired and didn't really know what to do, mm -hmm. but still was still on that... I need to find the masked lords thing and weirdly assumed, I don't know 
why, looking at the six characters on screen, he <laughs> assumed that masked lords would be at Shaka's wet. Like, I don't even know where he got that from. What a strange yeah. idea. Right? Mert wasn't even invited. Specifically yeah. not invited. <laughs> Mert's still drinking somewhere. Actively not invited. <laughs> no. Well, um, he, he kind of deflated when I asked him that very obvious question. Right. <laughs> They're not on the guest list. Why would they be here? And mm. trust me, if they're not on, Kent will be stabbing people to keep them out. So, well, Tara's lucky he ran into Salise first. Mm -hmm. It's for real. Like, and is he though? I was just about to say. <laughs> like, um. Anyway, but we did we did put Walter. You know, but there was a like a moment where Walter was just kind of like, look, maybe I just wanted to be invited to the wedding too, mm -hmm. and Shaka was kinder than most of us would have been <laughs> and uh, we had walter being our first line of defense in a very wide cordon far away from troll skull yeah. what did we say like four blocks or five yeah. blocks or something yeah. Yeah. yes yeah first line of defense five blocks out uh, that's right all all nine of your uh fwg uh, folks. that's right yeah that's right out of 100 you got it's great no, they're yeah, they're only nine. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a D one hundred, right? That that he yeah. rolled. Yeah. yeah, and we got nine. We got nine. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? What? Uh, anything else in particular? I mean, really, that was it. The wedding was the whole thing. Yeah, was the prepping thing. for the wedding, doing the things um, that we needed to do. Prepping for the wedding. For the wedding. I, yeah. uh, I did like that Jerry was a chandelier. I yeah. Oh good. yes, Jerry, the joke telling um, chandelier. It's really good. Um, yeah. I also the, like that Shaka kind of. Uh, did not do any of the plans that uh oh y'all had uh planned for him uh-huh uh-huh uh -huh. <laughs> yeah can i uh can i just read the note that i wrote for the, the last note that i wrote for the end of this episode <laughs> yeah, I, I would love it. I, yeah so I the would final love. note underneath the heading the wedding but the last thing that i wrote uh two weeks ago was in all capitals shock and dara skip the damn wedding but it's fine <laughs> it's totally fine we aren't upset or anything <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. They arrived. <laughs> they had already gotten married legally, so we just got to have a party. Yeah, Yay. we just skip right to the reception, mm -hmm. and That's nothing we... bad happened. And I mean that sincerely. Nothing bad happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut two. No, <laughs> is that wait? Is that okay? Are we allowed to do that? I okay. think it's fine. I okay. mean, it, it it was because Walter protected us. Yes, like, that's absolutely. gotta be it. That's, that's gotta that's be the it. Cut two. Yes. Walter versus thirty like people <laughs> in an alley. But also, what what's that gonna do for Walter's ego? My mm. goodness. Mm. Oh, I don't know. So that brings us to today. Mm -hmm. Shall we? I'm afraid. I'm ready. It's fine. No. Yeah. Currently. The on full Rebels spectrum of, of emotions. <laughs> yeah, really. And, <laughs> and the most enthusiastic did not come from the DMs. Uh, all right, here we go. <laughs> I love it. Oh, time is so, you're muted. We are going to stole. Go ahead. Uh, uh, uh. No, okay. <laughs> okay. We're going to start this week uh, with Dahani. Whoa, why? And we're going to start this week with Dahani way back when we have just dealt with the xanathar mm -hmm. we've just come back above ground we're talking to lairn we're talking to walter and to honey you are i believe at some point you went and uh you'll have to remind me exactly but i believe you had a conversation about uh coming back to chult or staying in chult or being more involved in chult Yes, uh, as we were leaving, we were intercepted briefly by Kevin. Uh, not the squirrel, the Eric Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. It's a very common, uh, very common name. Very common name. Who had come to see what the heck was going on because the volcano wasn't volcanoing, and that's a problem. Um, and I mentioned that we had taken care of it, and um, you know we didn't know what the after effects of it were going to be, and so I said that I would come back in a little bit to see how things work. Which I did in a previous episode. You did. So we're going to go back to that conversation. And there are a few things that you notice while chatting with Kevin. And one of the things is that Kevin more than once refer, like lets it slip that he refers to you as 
the murder burb. And uh, it isn't the first time that you've heard that while Tear has done it on several occasions. Mm. Uh, and the worst thing is that one of the times that Kevin used it was when he said something along the lines of there are a lot of people back in Kirsabal who would be very happy to have the murder burb back. I mean, Dahani, to, to have you back. Is this a thing? Like, is it really a thing? Uh, 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 that we miss you? That... <laughs> I'm imagining that face on a bird. It's... No, that... I didn't... Never killed anybody. Oh. Well, still, it's a very exciting moniker that really, you know, people have 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 really latched on to, but 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 you know, you'll see, you'll see. And if it's the incorrect uh, impression, then then you returning and, and being back with us for a while will 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 correct it. It's not that widespread. From nearby you hear. Um, you hear like, a, you know, like you're, you're chatting and there are, here's of all like residents everywhere, but you hear some kids playing just off to the side. And one is absolutely like doing the pose, like I'm the honey, I'm the number one murder verb. And then another's like, well, I guess I'm the volcano. And a third one really does like, I guess I'm the rain that was around the chult. Why do you always get to be the honey? Because she's the coolest, coolest, number one murder burp, number one murder burp. Kevin I, is living for this and just like pointing and like nodding and smiling. No. No. That was not the intention of when, how did you all even find out about the incident that I, that no one died in? No one died. And this name has been following me for years. And the children, the tiny burbies. No. Kevin sort of looks back at them, looks at you. He does that a few times. And each time he turns back to you, his face falls a little more. And finally, he says, um, we look forward to seeing you again very soon, Dahani. Let's yeah. jump. We jump to uh, about six months later. This is your second trip back to Chult now, Tahani, since since the Xanathar incident. What do you do? Who do you talk to? What are you here for? Um, first and foremost, I am here to um check up like i i stop at kirsa ball because being relatively close to the volcano they would also have great eyes on it so i check in with like you know the elders of kirsa ball to see if there have been any weird environmental things going on um and, yeah go on no as you you've done that and and they they have commented on the slow return of Kirsabal's climate to to what everyone considers normal. Um, that it's taken a while, and you you've noticed like there are, there are now less um, less outer garments. People are kind of feeling uh, chult as it's supposed to be, and and it's I, I feel now I know it's fantasy because I'm saying the climate has you know equalized. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> and the the elders are um, they are they're happy to see you back. Um, the all of all of Kirsabal brightens when you return. You know your reputation has spread for better or worse. Um, but at this point, they are they are merely happy to have you back. And and is there anything that we can do for your stay this time uh, to make you more more comfortable or, or happy or I mean, anything no, i mean does he sound nervous about this nervous to please but not nervous like afraid okay 
Uh, I, I mean, no. I just, if my room's still here, that's fine. I'll take it. But I had a question. Um, I mean, I'm sure you've heard, because I've certainly heard. I've heard it more than most people. Um, that you know, a certain, a certain nickname has preceded me back home here to Kirsten Ball. And I don't like it. Murder bird. Murder bird. You can murder. see that his eyebrows have been furrowing and knitting just on a loop. Don't say murder bird. Don't say murder bird. Don't say murder bird. Say murder bird. Like, I, <clears throat> we, uh, uh uh, reputation is a wonderful thing surely uh that that can't be too problematic can it would you want to be known as the murder bird any in the new place like if you went to like if you for example went to like um or you know if you if you went to Baldur's Gate and somebody called you a murder bird, what kind of reputation do you what kind of expectation do you think people would have of you? I yes. I, I can see your point. Well, we can certainly we can certainly spread I don't know the 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 reverse of the word to perhaps maybe get people to stop calling you that, cheering that, putting it on artwork, perhaps making little sashes. I, I it's I I'm I'm sorry. It's sort of become its own um mini thing. It's going to be hard to stop, but we will try our best to stop it. Okay, yes. well, I mean, admittedly, I have some role in this, being the bird who kind of punches first and asks questions later. So perhaps we can help each other in this, and I can maybe do a little bit more than punch. Or, I oh. don't know, maybe my punches could do something different. Oh. Like, is, help. Is that is that a thing that they can do? We, I, we just, we, obviously you are more than capable. Um, you are more than capable as a traveler and an adventure. And it, if, if there is something, you, I, honestly, we're very, very sorry about the murder burp thing. Uh, Kevin told us how much you didn't appreciate it the first time. And we were really, it got out of, it, it got out of our hands. We, mm. So, if you choose to um, perhaps do some reputation management, we, of course, would support you in that. Okay. We have healers, right? Yes. Yes, of course, yes. Cool. I want to spend some time with them. Very well. You may you... Someone, regardless of... Moniker, someone of your, some of your well-storied adventures has the run of Kirsabal, please. As yeah, like. but also I'm just ding dang Dahani. Just cause, just cause I've gone and done a whole bunch of things. Dang, does it? No, it doesn't flow. We won't use that. No. Just call me Dahani. It's my name. Yes, Dahani. We, we will of course make sure to let. People know that we will downplay the murder burb and focus on simply welcoming you home as Dahani. Thanks. So they do. They try this. You you notice, particularly from this individual and the people that that you know he has access to, they they have that focus when they talk to you to not use the name. It's uh, real. It's real awkward because they just stare. They do, <laughs> and like it, it's enough of them that it is a a common thing for you to experience, but also not enough of them that you don't 
still here, murder verb. And so you spend some time, you're here for about a month this time, and yeah. you spend a lot of that time, it sounds like, with some of the healers here at Kir Sabal, and it is a different experience for you, not just because of what you do as part of the rivals and as a monk and all of those things, but also this healing isn't like Salise heals or Gazric heals uh, or even Shaka heals. This is different. Uh, this is a lot of elbow grease and herbalism poultices and bandages. There's Acky magic pressure. too. Yeah, that and that. There's there's uh, there's magic too, but it's it's much more mundane here for this, and it's also hard. It's just hard work. Uh, not that Tahani is any stranger to that or wasn't expecting it, but it is so different that it is it is difficult. Tahani, would you make me a wisdom saving throw? I know you're quite good at those. Mm, yes, I am. That's a 19. Okay. The first time there is a really, really busy day. There is an accident out uh, in Chult in the jungles uh, and several scouts are brought back with various injuries ranging from, uh, you know, bumps and bruises and scrapes and cuts to, uh, you know, broken, broken wing bones and some pretty serious, pretty serious injuries. Things are bustling and busy and and you have only been there for at most a couple of 10 days uh and so you are still very much you know low bird on the toad on the on the hierarchy and so it is a lot of people ordering you places moving you places demanding things and you are placid your training as a monk might have been combat focused but there is a meditation and a centeredness about that that you carry into this and so you get through that day and by the end of the day you see all um, most of the other healers are absolutely drained and exhausted and you feel it but you have a certain you know you conserved some of that energy by not being frantic and manic and keeping it there make another it's wisdom relatable. Save. To Latina yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're gay. Hey, it's. I mean, listen, we're all it's too much of these circle. characters, yeah. but that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So let's do another. Same. One. Same. Okay, uh -huh. and it continues. Uh, there are busy days and easy days, and throughout all of them, you maintain this placid demeanor. And after your month is up. One of the master healers here in this in this place that you've been working comes to you and, you know, has a has a moment with you and says. Um, We're going to miss you. It's been helpful having you around. I hope that you've enjoyed your stay with us. Well, I mean, it's just like it's it's coming home. It's not like. <laughs> sure, I mean... No, of course, of course. But we've been gone for some time and we all well. We wanted to make sure that that you enjoyed yourself now that you get to spend some time back here. Yeah, it's always, it's good. This has been good. This has been hard. This has been good. I would have said some of the same things. You have been impressive. It's, she like preens, like she gets all fluffy. Uh, yes. <laughs> I could almost forget that moniker that we hear around town for you. You still hear it? Once in a while, I hear you've been attempting some image rehabilitation. Okay. I guess that's all right. Next time you manage to come back, I have someone who I think you might like to meet. Oh, yeah? Uh, if you're willing, of course, I think they might be able to help you with uh, that rehabilitation, I, I suppose. Uh, if that's something you're interested in. Yes, very much. Mm -hmm. I'm trying desperately to find a map of Cholt real fast and it's not going great. Uh... There's a map. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Um, so he says, um, well, excellent then. 
the next time you come, if you could just give me a little heads up that you'll be on your way. And um, then once you're settled here in Kir Sabal, uh, just head due east, uh, just to the to the edge of Refuge Bay, and um, he'll find you. Cryptic, but honestly, uh... <laughs> I don't Normal. mean to be, I just, um, it's better if he does all of his own introductions. Ooh, fun. Okay. Uh. Okay. Look, it's really, it's really cryptic, and I've never been good with words, so. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, the, the sealer sort of, uh-huh. Um, you'll get along famously. <laughs> awesome. And so then you return to Waterdeep um, yeah. after that six month marker. Uh, lots of things happen over the next several months. How long? I mean, I would assume sometime in the next six to 12 months. But how long do you think it is before Dahani is able to make it back to Chart? Uh, Dahani truly uh, stops herself from just heading east when she leaves Kirsten. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yes, absolutely. Um. <laughs> You know, I'm gonna make a wisdom saving throw of my own. I love because it. She she really wants this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I rolled a, a twenty one. So, okay. um, let's see. Let me check the document to see what has happened. <laughs> in the, in well, the that's it's so interesting that you mentioned that because at this point in our little timeline, we have a bit of a gap for all of us except Chaka. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> You know, between um, now and four years later, it's up to you. <laughs> actually, it'll be the same time the year following. So a okay. year later. A year later. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so... Sh Sharif is the only one of us who really, really knew what he wanted to do with the yeah. <laughs> story. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, I love it. I appreciate it. Uh, all right. So you may, that 21 gets you to wait for 18 months. Do you go straight to Refuge Bay or do you head to Kir Sabal first? No, I go straight to Refuge Bay. Yeah, okay. I love it. I love it. So you as you as you are flying in, you know, you see the spire that is Kir Sabal and you're just like, nope, and head, mm -hmm. head to the east a little ways. <laughs> and you descend down into Refuge Bay. And there is, you can see as you're descending, there is a tiny tiny aracocra waiting for you on the beach smaller than me smaller than you okay. <laughs> uh and as you get a little closer you see that this individual is one of you i don't know that you even personally know any sparrow aracocra aracocra but this <laughs> is a, i mean he is a he is and as you get closer you can see he is Tiny because he is a sparrow aracocra, sparrow aracocra, but also because he is quite old uh, and quite wizened sparrow cocra. Uh, and he is quite wizened. Um, but he very clearly knows that you're coming because as soon as you get within a couple hundred feet, as soon as you're able to see him clearly, he just tilts his head up and sort of tracks your progress in the sky as you alight. Ooh. I think if I clock that, I don't like, I think if I clock that, then I'm just going to land. Yeah. Okay. Like, I mean, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the, you know, I'm gonna, you know, uh, chalt air traffic control. I'm gonna circle and <laughs> sure and land properly, sure. but sure, I'm not of course. gonna like sightsee. Okay. Great. Uh, once you're down there, uh, he nods at you. I nod back. Uh, he gestures for you to follow. See what they meant, and then they go. <laughs> And he leads you into the woods, the jungle. And after maybe 15 or 20 minutes of, of trekking, uh, you see a little, like a little knoll with a, sorry, not G-N-O-L-L, -L, K-N-O-L-L. -L, right. uh, grassy knoll. A grassy one. Not demonic hyena. Uh, with a with a an opening in it, like a little looks like a very tiny little like cave entrance. Mm. Uh, and he stands next to it and gestures for you to go in. Well, um, I need you to understand that Dahani has been literally like almost to bursting with questions. Uh-huh. 
Let me make another wisdom saving throw. Yeah, do it. <laughs> oh, she's good. She's good. She understands this. I rolled a 30. <laughs> oh, very good. Okay, yeah, she gets it. She gets yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, I get it. It's it's about the process. I He's not going to answer it. Ding, ding, one of my questions. All right. <laughs> um, I give him a little bow before I go into this weird cave thing. Uh, he nods back at you and appreciates that and follows you in inside. You take a couple of steps and it looks like, uh, you know, it's like, it's like maybe a 10 foot, like diameter hemisphere of space in there. Uh, and so you sort of walk in and, and stop and he just walks right by you. And as he passes you, you can see that the wall here, the back wall of this, uh, is sort of cleverly constructed to conceal a tiny not tiny he's been easy enough for both of you to fit through but a small little gap that you can walk through and he does and and as he walks through this gap deeper into whatever this space is you clock this this crack and can go through it as well yep i just follow and there is an enormous open space inside the floors are hard packed dirt. You can see a couple of tunnels, entrances going off into various places. Mm -hmm. It's silent at the moment. There's not anybody else here. And this Sparrow Cocra walks to the center of this vaguely circular, big open chamber and turns to look at you and sort of cocks his head to the side with a little bit of curious questioning. And this goes on for, and interrupt me if you do anything, but this goes on for about 10 seconds. Another, another 20, so we're getting to 30 seconds. And after a full minute, the Sparrow Cocra smiles a tiny little Sparrow smile, nods, and says, you'll do. And then extends his arm out his his okay remind me you got wing arms or you got separate wings and arms we got separate wings and arms okay that's what i thought so extends his arm out i was correct i just had a moment six limbs <laughs> the right. the portrait is what i just checked I was yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he extends his arm out and says fix it and then takes his arm and just it looks like the lightest tap right in the middle of his arm with his other hand and you can see his arm bone break jesus freaking christ what i know that's latia's reaction what is dahani's reaction <laughs> jesus freaking christ <laughs> oh no no you cannot do that you cannot introduce theology of our world i'm gonna, I'm gonna have too many questions now <laughs> Um, I think she, uh, she jumps back, like, and it's not even a jump back. She's startled. Yeah, one, yeah of course. One, that this little old bird mm -hmm. broke one of his little old bird bones mm -hmm. without a flinch. Mm -mm. But also, okay. Uh, so, uh, Dahani's going to walk up to this sparrow cocra. Mm-hmm. And she's going to take the arm in her hand, okay. in her hands. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's also going to, like, support the arm with her wing. So there's, like, four limb support here. <laughs> Good. Um, and then she's going to, like, feel the, feel the arm, mm -hmm. feel the bone, mm -hmm. um, find where it was broken. Um, and she's going to... Like she saw the way that he hit it. Mm -hmm. And so she's actually going to like go the opposite way. She's going to turn like she's going to turn so that she's she's almost hitting it back into place. Mm -hmm. um, and then make an unarmed strike. Yeah, do that. I didn't show you this character sheet, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is a 30. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you are. He doesn't flinch. He doesn't wince. He doesn't. But I mean, you know, it's broken. Mm -hmm. And so you are 
so ginger and so careful and try to be so precise and you are and you are precise and so you tap it just right and it is very clearly now reset just perfectly and he nods and then says fix it yeah uh, no, that is what I'm doing. I am using. Oh, so you are uh, using. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I am using <laughs> hand of healing. Okay. Uh, so that I can expend a key point to heal one d ten uh plus five hit points, and that Very was nine. Nice. All right. So, uh, as you hit it, you focus, and there is. It's almost like. <laughs> We've made jokes about this before. You have not spent a ton of time using your Kensei abilities over the last uh, several nope. years. But once in a while, you have at least once, at least since I've been on the show. And so you are at least familiar, though maybe it's been a while, with the feeling of your energy and your focus extending to your weapon or your ha- or your your unarmed strikes or whatever it is. This is like that. But you remember all of those calm patient moments with the healers and you find this inner well and as you hit it it's almost as if his arm bones become your kensei weapon it's a similar feeling that you are extending your awareness and your your focus into his arm and after a few moments you back up a little bit and he takes his arm and he apparently does the chicken dance <laughs> and uh nods a good start will you stay yeah like no like n- no pause nothing like the so and of course she has not been idle uh, over the last year um she's been practicing this she hasn't been practicing this on anybody <laughs> right right like so, so you know actually the duos might know because du- Cobalt Duo is very clumsy. Uh, <laughs> so the duos might know, um, but nobody else knows. Actually, Kevin the Squirrel might know um, because <laughs> she's just been practicing on like animals and duo and like actually random people in Waterdeep. None of the rivals because for Amazing. whatever reason, she wanted to keep this one a secret from the rivals. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's not like she hasn't done this before. But this is a this is a serious it like she's not broke. She's not mended any broken bones or anything like that. Um, so this is probably the first broken bone that she's mended. And to see that her hard work over the last year has paid off mm-hmm. without a, without a doubt, she's saying because right. it's different. It's something that she has found she really enjoys and she mm. wants to continue learning it. I love that. I love that. Oh, that's that's wonderful. And with your decision to stay, you continue working with this Sparrow Kokoro, which I am now saying out loud for the first time, and it's not weird at yes. all. Nope. And there are more there are more moments like this where he simply injures himself and says, fix it. And over time, you realize that you've always been aware of that energy within yourself. You've always kind of felt your own key. But as was said before, feeling like this is extending to your weapon you're now starting to see the flow of energy within the sparrow kokra and once you're a little more aware of it you are completely unsurprised that this that, that the sparrow kokra thought nothing of breaking a bone here or twisting or snapping because their energy it's he's simply suffused with so much energy that mm-hmm. if you hadn't gotten it he would have been fine um and that is over over time you continue and i am spinning sort of into training montage ish areas here but you do you le- <laughs> um you do you you learn to Sorry, no, and now I'm stuck with the meat in the Rocky movie and the thing, but no. Literally, um, I was I was stopping myself yeah, from asking, it's, is it's it a cow? Tough. What is it's, what it's is tough. in a free <laughs> um and in addition, you know, it, there is there is still some light sparring. So it is still you are still understanding how this can be used in a way of martial arts and in your normal fashion. And you simply now learn that, you know, you're 
as, as you say, you know, you've, you've learned how to now use your hand to heal and to harm, and this is new for you. And I think we will sort of pull away from you continuing this montage yeah. with Sparacopra, who I, somebody needs to name the Sparacopra because why? Um, yeah. And, um, and, and we as, pull back to thank you because I yeah, was course, looking for what time out, it was. Yeah, as we pull out from there, uh, <laughs> we see we're back, uh, sort of in Waterdeep, and we're seeing everything that's going on there at that point with folks. Uh, Shaka is building the the puzzle shop and getting the sign, and Shaka Ration is being developed, and Kaguya is coming and telling about the abilities, and we watch as <laughs> suns and moons come and go, and we move forward a little bit to beyond Chaka's wedding. This is maybe a year or so, maybe as much as two years after Chaka's wedding. And rather than coming back down on the Chalton Peninsula, we go east this time, far, far east to Tarami, where we see Selyse, who has taken a trip home. Mm -hmm. For the first time in, is it since you picked Virgil and Kent up? Is that the last time you were in Toronto? Yeah. Hey. It's been a while. It's been a while. You've just arrived, mm -hmm. Selyse. Why did you come? Selyse has been plagued by Kent's question. And I, I just want to point out, Selyse has been plagued by this question now at this point for six to seven years. Oh, yeah, the right, because that came oh, yeah. before the wedding. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So this well, has been, which, no, exactly. I think it makes sense, right? Yeah. I mean, Selyse has been, the truth is, Selyse has been thinking about this long before Kent said anything, because it was part of, I think at least, your decision to change your oath. So mm -hmm. just the fact that it's been that many years since you and Kent talked, I mean, is a lot, but it's a big decision and that makes sense. Yeah, and plague plague makes it sound bad. Well, it is it has been in the back of her mind, and then when Kent asked, it made her stop pretending to ignore that question. <laughs> um, she was thinking about it and thinking about it, and um, actually, Kent finds a note. Oh, okay. Um, just I don't have a good answer to that question. Going home for a while. And that's okay. the note that Kent finds. I like it. Yeah, I like that. Okay. And so you arrive here in in uh, in Termish and do you uh, where do you go? I mean, do you go home first? Do you do you go Ooh. to something familiar? Do you look for someone you know? Do you just avoid people you know just to take in the sights of home? What's what's the first stop? Well, she's not sure her home would be there anymore because it's been a long time since yeah, she was it's in Tarami. <laughs> even when she, even when she found Kent and Virgil, I, mm -hmm. she may have like been in her old home, but that's still been now what seven years? We said uh, at um, least, yeah, it, closer to a decade. So she might, yeah. she might either go to an inn or maybe okay. to uh, an inn near the temple for Tyr. Got it. Okay. Near Paladin School. Do you near Paladin School? Okay. okay. Do you think I don't know a ton about uh Selyse's time in Termish before she joined the rivals. Do you think people would recognize you here? Were you known here before? A few it's been a long people time, but... might. Okay. okay. Um people that were neighbors of her and her wife. Um though and you know, with the event that got her wife killed. They may be cautious, but they're I, I feel like two people would definitely recognize her. One, the God, I can't think of the right word. Whoever would be in charge of Tears Temple, the main priest or priestess. Mm -hmm. Um and then the person that weirdly enough was the baker, because she had the habit of getting up and <laughs> getting fresh baked goods for her and her wife in the morning. And that baker is still there. Wow, and, you yeah. know, they were younger than her. They they would have had no reason to leave. And they Sleece would have stuck with them because of, well, being there almost every day. And also, mm -hmm. the last time they saw Sleece, she was a changed woman. That would have struck them. 
Oh, sure. Mm. So when you, does curiosity and perhaps a little bit of memory and familiarity take you back to visit that baker, to visit that bakery? Yeah, you know, she's feeling a little homesick. And yeah. after she drops her stuff off, uh, she she goes to see if the baker is still there. And you follow the path, not just your feet, remember, but the scent is still draws you in. And mm -hmm. and you do. You um Masu took a bite as soon as I started talking about food. <laughs> Rude. Um and, and you, do. you wander you wander um you wander in and it doesn't look too change um aside from aside from a fix here and there and a tidy but everything is as you remembered it they've they've tried to they've tried to stay constant mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you just look or do you wander in you better wander um... in wondering <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm joking i'm joking i'm like wow i I, um, I, I don't know what's here today <laughs> um Slice kind of stares in the window for a little bit and she sees like the croissants and the the kind of spongy um what's the i know the right word for it, but like almost like sponge cake type cupcakey things because that's what i actually had for breakfast um and she she stares in the the window for a minute and before she can get super sad about it, she does go in and decides to get a few things. And with the sound of the door closing um, behind you, you you hear oh, one minute, be right with you, and you see someone in the back who, um, like, just you can see kind of through the back where they are mm -hmm. attending to the oven and they are taking they are taking baked goods out and. Um, as they completely dust the flour off of their apron, they turn around and, oh, Solis? Yeah, still me. You can see them doing a little bit of math in their head. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah, a long time. Your usual? Yeah. And without even thinking, almost as though it's by his memory, he starts mm. putting together, he starts putting together croissants and a bit mm. of brioche and some morning pastries um, together in a small basket. And that's, that's put on top of the counter. And how have you been? Oh, how much time do you have? Well, um, I mean, you know, the bake has got to get going, so I don't have a lot of time, but it's it's, it's um, good to see you and, and get caught up a bit. Well, I mean, you, you know what drove me to leave and yes. been traveling and adventuring and doubt you would have heard of it, but Rivals of Waterdeep, that's what I've been doing. That's someplace far west, right? Yeah, Waterdeep, it's a waste. It's a waste, yeah. Huh. Who knew you'd go yeah. so far? I mean, not we me. miss. We and as he's talking, he is doing the standard. He is he is still working while chatting yeah. with you. So it's like it's an over the counter conversation. Well, we we sure did miss you, and we we were real sorry at what happened. It's yeah. holding on to. I mean, us holding on to grief doesn't even compare to what you've been holding on to, but. You, you uh, what else water water deep rivals what is that a is that a group yeah a bunch of us adventurers have been running around for the last few years trying to you know do the adventure thing right wrongs save people found a dragon went to hell where else did we go we did a lot he was very non-reactive for the first part of that list yeah. and then you got to dragon and there's like the uh, oh no focus on the okay oven yeah got it <laughs> so sounds like you've been busy but maybe you found a found a new family uh, yes yes and that that's that's complicated is not a word that is suffice sufficient for uh that but yes i i found some folks that 
without them, I don't know if I'd still be here. Well, then I guess we all have to thank them as well. Um, they've, they've missed you. They, they've missed you at the, uh, at the temple. I, I, I think your, oh. your loss was one thing, but then your leaving affected everyone here. Really? Yeah. Well, you were missed. Hmm. That. She, you see her get choked up a little bit. I'm trying not to laugh. break you. Oh, God. <laughs> I, know, I know it's too early in this scene to do that. Um, That's coming. Uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> she gets choked up a little bit and just like, didn't realize anybody would. Well, not that many people would notice when I left. Well, I mean, for one, the uh, no, this is not bad. Um, mm. you you were the you you were the 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 person who po purchased the most of our brioche, so obviously we noticed that that <laughs> oh, was most, you know the, I, that, I see. Those, so so there's a little bit extra in for you if, if you want it, but it's it's become popular since. Oh, I see. Um, but yeah, it's real. It's real good to see you. The bell over the door rings, and. A voice calls out, Jobal, I'm here for but As I live and breathe. Salisa Storio. And, and in walks the head priest from the Temple of Tear. Oh, he hello. I can't. I'll have to have a word with Tear. He didn't alert me that you were coming. Why uh, it's, it's it's a it's a joke, Salisa. Oh. Sorry, I'm still practicing. It you'll get better. Well, it's been 34 years, but all right. It's been 84, but that's okay. How am I that old? What? Uh, sorry, Jobel. Uh, the usual for the the temple, Salise, uh Yeah, yeah. How long are you here? I don't know yet. It's a long way back to Tarami from Waterdeep, so uh, I'm going to stay for a while. He sort of, you know what, actually, let me do this. Yeah. He looks at you and, and sort of examines you for a minute and then says, um, it's been a while. I, no pressure, of course, but stop in if you have a chance. I will. I'll uh, drop off what I don't have for breakfast and I'll uh actually you know what I'll come with you if that's okay of course but well we can't leave until Jobel's back with the pastries I, the I, other I priests know. get very <laughs> I remember I remember mornings where uh <laughs> some people didn't get their favorites uh, yep and they Jobel presents the order for the priest and Having absolutely not been listening in, Salisa, there, has been, there, there all of a sudden is a little more than Sali, than you were expecting oh, no. in, in yours. Um, and, uh, well, and he says, you know, come back and see us anytime, fixing his eyes on you, Salise, and I will. The, I will. the head priest can have his whatever. <laughs> he leaves a generous, you know, <laughs> sum of, of payment for the goods. And uh, I definitely overpay for mine, and yeah. I throw in a little bit. Yeah. The walk back to Tears Temple is uh, quiet, I imagine. The priest certainly doesn't prompt any conversation on the way, um, mm. as much because he respects a bit of silence now that you all are together again, and also because he's chowing down. I don't know if you are, but he certainly is. Oh, yeah, I'm absolutely like, I pulled out <laughs> one of those buns that has like a sausage in it, like a mm -hmm. sausage roll, and I'm... Absolutely. Yeah, he's got more of a sweet tooth, the priest, so he's got a, you know, he's got a, a sort of Danish kind of thing going on. Uh, are they called Danishes? There's no Dutch. It doesn't sure. matter. Move on, uh, don't. don't introduce this question to me. <laughs> I'm sure someone will tell us on Twitter. <laughs> How does it feel, Salise, to see this temple again? Kind of like a gut punch right yeah. now, because she... To, to paraphrase from uh, 
one of our favorite musicals. She feels nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, as you walk in, it is like not a second has passed. Mm. Uh, partially, you know, the art and the architecture and the functional parts of tear worship are have been the same for uh, centuries millennia mm -hmm. and the people may have changed some of the priests may have you know gotten promoted or moved out and new folks have come in but the routine the predictability the tradition of a day at this temple hasn't changed. And so you come in and uh, it's just about uh, time for morning worship. And so the bells are ringing. And the priests and acolytes are hurrying about. Uh, you can see them coming in and out of where you know the sanctuary to be. But the head priest leads you, uh, he grabs one of the acolytes and whispers something to him and sends him running off and then leads you to his office oh. rather than to the sanctuary. Okay. Uh, and he gestures for you to have a seat and he sits uh, behind his desk and he says, I'm thrilled that you're back, Salise. What brings you to us? And Selyse looks down because she's not sure how to say this out loud. She knows what she wants to say. Mm -hmm. As you do, he says, there's a reason I asked you here and not in the sanctuary. Oh. I had to come back to the temple. I, I needed to instruct them to handle morning prayers without me. But pretend for a moment, if you can that I am not the head priest that trained you in the proper forms and figures of worshipping Tyr. Am I but about to get a quiz? But instead, I am your old friend. Mm. What brings you back, Salise? Well... In my travels, I have avenged malevolent, but I did not do so in a way befitting of tear or the training I've had. I've walked several paths, coming back to tear eventually. But a friend posited the question of why, why am I a paladin? And I have no answer that will suffice. So I wanted to come back where it all began and have a word with Tyr and see if what I'm not feeling is something he would confirm if he even would answer me at this point. And if what my heart is telling me is true, then to lay down the arms and armor of a paladin. He keeps a fairly neutral face through all of that nodding every now and again to, you know, active listening. Mm -hmm. And after a few moments of silence, when you're done, he says, why were you a paladin? Were, not are. Vengeance at first, you know that. I do, I do. You trained me. I did. You helped me see past my rage and my anger and my hurt. And after I got my vengeance, I didn't know what to do when I lost touch with Petir. And I walked the path of the blood hunter, and that wasn't for me either. That does shock him a little bit. Really? Not in, a, he... not in a bad way, but he's like, oh, I thought you meant like you were a fighter for a while. Yikes. Hunter's kind of sort of fight, but <laughs> um, and it's like, and I, but that wasn't for me. And I, I got in touch more with nature and the wonder that is there and. I didn't bring him with me, but I do have an animal companion now, a dire wolf. And I felt the call of the ranger and of the barbarian to let that quiet rage for serve more of a function. 
I struggled often with the right thing and the gray path and often the darker sides of that. And I realized finally, I had no good answer for my friend. I don't know why I'm a paladin anymore, or was a paladin. Why do you think Tyr chose, allowed you to be a paladin? Well, from my last conversation, he saw something in me. I just, I never found what he saw in me after years of struggle and trying and often leaning more into the wrong reasons to do things than oh, the right. I understand. I understand. You know better than our Lord. No, 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 no. I just never saw what he saw, but I am no... I am no god to see into the souls of anyone, let alone my own dim view of my future. You recognize that and yet you doubt. I'm human. <laughs> Touche. I did train you well. Yeah. But the question stands. You may not see it, but you know the requirements, you know the expectations. I can't give you answers, Celise. I am proud of you. I am happy to see you. I am glad that you are okay. I am glad that one way or another you have gotten past the anger and the need for vengeance. But I cannot answer this question, and though I would never discourage you from communing with our Lord Tyr, I doubt that he will answer this question for you either. Mm. What you forget, or what you seem to forget, if I may, is that you weren't a paladin by accident, by mistake. You are, and continue to be for now, a paladin because you uphold in some way the tenets of faith that Tyr demands of his champions. Your goal of getting vengeance was never why he granted you his holy might. Even any attempts at redemption after the fact, you were chosen because you were devoted and because you represented that which Tyr wants to see in this world. Even if you couldn't see it, even if you lost it now and again, even if you forgot what those things were. And I hope that I chose this office and not the sanctuary correctly, because I don't really want him hearing this when I say, <laughs> and I think you can do all of those things as a paladin or not. Mm. I have always thought that. Then should mm -hmm. I should I take up the robe and the and the lectern? <laughs> you, Celise Astorio, can do anything you want, but I wouldn't recommend that for your path. No, really. <laughs> I think you, you mock have... me. No, I mock you not. I try and save you from this, and he sort of laughs as he gestures broadly. He says, you have much more to give the world at large than to be stuck behind a pulpit in a robe, shouting prayers to tear several mm. times a day. Mm. But if that is your calling, so be it. Mm. You remember how hard I tried to push you in any other direction when we began our training. Yeah. You've always been able to do all of these things, to believe all of these things, to represent and stand for and uphold all of these things, whether or not Tyr gave you magic powers to back it up. Mm. But know this. If you do decide to continue, he'll expect much of you. He has been permissive, from what I can tell. And he has his reasons for that, and I don't know what they are. Hmm. If you decide to remain, after all of this soul-seeking and thinking, he will expect much. I believe oh, you sure. can give him that. Hmm. But know that he will require it. 
I'm sure. He said as much the last time I spoke with him. Well, then. I can see you want to meditate. Morning prayers should be just about done. The sanctuary should be empty shortly. Good luck, Silies. I have no doubt that you will find the way that is right for you. I've always known that. Hmm. And as I stand to go, I, I leave a, a pouch of coin on the desk. I mean, as, I re, as far as I remember, we're also really rich, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I leave a, a healthy uh, donation. Uh, he looks at it and says, well, done well for yourself, at least. Yeah, finding a dragon will do that for you. <laughs> He nods and so he sort of nods and shakes his head incredulously and just does a big circle with his head uh, and says, get, get now. Oh, it was good seeing you too. He laughs as he like shuts the door in your face. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he's, it's all very like loving, you know, but he's like, go, you, uh, you got to go do your thing. You got to, you got to yeah. figure this out. And he's not going to tell you any answers. Yeah, well, I figured he might not have any answers, but <laughs> you can't blame Celise for trying. No, no, of course not. And he was happy to see you. And the, as you as you leave, and and as was promised, the main the main chamber morning 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 worship morning worship is about done, and the and the main chamber is empty. Um, if you if you wish to sit, ponder, meditate, etc. Um. I'm going to find a spot and actually sit, but with one of my breakfast buns mm. and like eat and ponder quietly, as quiet as you can be with a breakfast bun, I guess, in church. <laughs> oh, it's probably really flaky too. So yeah, like, yeah there's, there's just a lot of, there's a lot there's of, a lot yeah, of crinkle. Um, yeah. And you do, and you do sit and it, it is quiet. It's peaceful. It's lovely. And a feeling overtakes you and it becomes much, much more quiet. Mm. And you're still there. You're still sitting. You're still enjoying your morning bun, but you're somewhere else. You are not there. And in this space, you are alone with your thoughts. You can feel your heart. You can, you can hear your heart beating. And, and if you look down, you notice that there is sort of a thread spinning out from your chest forward. Oh, that's new. Mm -hmm. And you kind of look around and realize, oh, okay, so I'm not, I'm, I'm not in the temple anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. and, it, and it heads and spins straight towards, um, in the distance, what looked like a giant set of scales. Oh. And what you start to see is you start to see visions hovering over these scales and their visions where you were there, but you're also outside watching them. And, and once at the scale, it sort of feels like it glows brighter and you see, and the visions that happen are those, those good moments that you have had in your life leading up to, you know, your life in Tarami and, and after, and as the timeline sort of spilling out of you flows, the visions continue to appear on both sides of the scales. The other side is a little darker. It is those lower moments in your life and those sad moments of grief and tragedy. And as these visions fill up and sort of move the scales, it weighs to one side, it weighs to the other, and it continues back and forth. And just when it seems that you the visions have kind of caught up to your visit, to you sitting down. You see yourself eating the bun. Don't ever look at yourself from outside yourself. It's very weird. Um, but the scales come to balance themselves. The light scale and the dark scale are even. And the glowing color of this thread from your soul has gone to neutral. And the scales ahead of you are even and Suddenly, you find yourself back in the temple, still eating your bun, still empty. You're still unbothered. Tear has shared with you, but has not spoken to you this time. 
Hmm. Interesting. Well, that was certainly an interesting vision. I don't know. What are they putting in those buns, right? Is that, was that <laughs> Brian or was that tear? I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. Um, but no, you, when you are back to yourself, you, you know, you kind of reflect on, you kind of reflect on the words of the, um, oh goodness, high priest. I, I yes. Yeah. You reflect on the words of the high priest and you, you, you perhaps think about this vision and, and you are left with the sense, the big priest guy, yes, you are left with the sense that since Tyr last spoke to you, and in that he said that, that he would not stop loving you, the high priest said he chose you for a reason, you are really left with a feeling of the future from now on is what you make of it. Your decisions will your decision at this point and going forward is still fine with tear, but it really, your fate as always lies within you. Mm. Um, is anyone else around when I, when I kind of open my eyes and go, Oh, I'm, I'm covered in crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't. And there is a silence over the sanctuary that feels not creepy, but definitely not natural, almost as if you are being given space and time and peace to make this choice. Hmm. Well, not that you're being forced into it. You could leave if you wanted. There's no, the doors aren't sealed. Yeah. <laughs> well, because it's Tarami and, you know, even though Celise is Celise, she didn't want to seem super aggressive when she when she was out and about in town. So she has just a short sword with her. Mm. her usual. She's not in her art. She doesn't look like she's going to go fight anybody. Sure. Um, and she actually takes her dagger out. And lays it in her hand and looks at it. And considers all that she's done with this dagger. She's harmed. She's saved people by cutting them free of ropes. Things like that. Mm. And. Are there candles or an altar anywhere, anywhere near where she's sitting? Oh, yeah, absolutely. She goes forward to an altar. And touches the blade to it. Mm -hmm. And she. this is all mental she's not speaking mm -hmm. out loud you're you're making this a difficult choice but for now i lay this dagger down in your service i'm going to stay here but i'm going to try to teach others not to give in to vengeance and follow the same dark path that i did if they will have me I will help train others, but in a way that helps them be better people and not fall to the darkness as I did. I don't know if you can hear me if you're listening or if you're just sitting there chuckling to yourself because you're tear and you knew this would happen anyway. But for now, I choose to stay for a while and serve this temple and serve others. And maybe, maybe find a measure of peace for myself. And uh, I forget, and this is out of character. Does tear take blood oaths? No, no. Look, I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good question, but no. Keep that on the inside of your body. It's and if, <laughs> uh, and as you, as you say this, you, as you pledge to remain here, to remain in tears' service. You weren't certain it was, I'll stay for now. I will see how things go. I'm going to, but the more you speak, the more you are filled with, if not certainty, confidence. Mm. And it takes you a moment to realize that the confidence is yours, but it's coming from tear as well. And the confidence turns to determination. 
and you get flashes of hard work, dedication, all of the things that you pledged when you first became a paladin. And your short sword, where it is touching the altar, begins to glow. And the light spreads up the sword and into your hand and suffuses your whole body. And at first it's too bright to see anything, but as your eyes adjust, the short sword in your hand has become your holy avenger again. And your armor of tear has appeared on you, burnished and gleaming. Tear's symbol in gem. And you feel parts of yourself not go away, not disappear, but fall to the back a little bit. The memories of those mutagens and admixtures from your time as a blood hunter retreat a little. They're there if you need to access them, but they go. That rage that you felt and used cools a little bit. There to access should you need, but further away. And in its place is holy might. And for your notes, Tyr has taken Selyse's pledge and has granted her 20th level Oath of Redemption Paladinhood. You are an avatar of peace in this world for Tyr. And a lot and... comes with that. A lot of your abilities will not function if you harm people. They, will, I, they literally will not function on that person. You have the ability to rebuke and calm and give peace to any individual. But as soon as you cause harm to that person, those abilities no longer function. And that is actually in the 20th level Oath of Redemption ability. Oh. Well. And uh, Selyse feels relief because she had come there with every intention of revoking her oath because she felt like she didn't deserve it and she just kneels there and starts weeping that's not what she thought would happen we zoom out from the temple where do we head next <laughs> we uh we oh goodness did we get a drone shot for this could we could we afford one of those <laughs> okay, okay. I, got I got it oh you got it. oh she's Thank got you. it great excellent so you see it is roughly 25 years after the Chult incident. Many things have happened. Dahani has gone home. Selyse has gone home. Kent and Virgil have gone home. Okay, maybe to not hell. that many different <laughs> things have happened, but it's fine. Um, but where we find ourselves is as the drone, as the drone shot kind of zooms back in, we find ourselves on a hill, well, formerly hill, now mountain outside of Waterdeep. And it over time, we've all of the rivals have they've gone, they've come back, they have led their lives. But on this day, all of the rivals have made a journey up this mountain that is just referred to as the mountain. Like it was a hill and now everybody in Waterdeep is like, what is the, what is that? The mountain. The mountain. And you see Sleese, Dahani, Shaka, Kent, and Virgil kind of sitting, kind of camped out like they've come prepared and they are just sitting next to the construct that Gosric has formed over himself and continues to do so repeatedly. And they're sort of looking over their friend and hoping that they've gotten their timing right and that this is when he's going to wake. Wink. <clears throat> what if Masood was like, nah, it's not for another three years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm done. I am done then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no, uh, yeah. And 
and along with them, there there has sort of been like scrambling around and up and down. There, of course, has been a squirrel. Kevin, it's a very, very proud lineage of Kevins that, that continues. Kevin the very first. I think Literally, at this point, after yes, all these yes, years, okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, really, it is the six of them, kind of, kind of looking around, and and they're like, it's a gorgeous, it's a gorgeous view. They're mm. they've been watching the sun up. They are it, the sun is perhaps at, the, at its peak, and and they're just kind of waiting. Gosric, mm-hmm. how many times in let's say twenty five years have you gone and and visited and gone back to being the construct um this is I just think, 25 ish years so yeah no 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 yeah yeah from the schult incident i think it kind of looks like a parabola shout out sharif um and uh <laughs> where okay but what's the, this equation yeah Stop x it. squared uh no, no no uh but like early on it's like a week later i'm i'm back um and not even a full week i think it starts out with yeah. like a day and then I'm back the next day and then like a week. Um, and then I think every increment of time kind of goes from a week to a fortnight mm. to a month to a quarter of the year to like six weeks in like cycle. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now at 25 years, I think it's been a full decade. Yeah. I think it's been a full 10 years now, like at, at the 15 mark. And, and I told everyone, it's like, yes, I'm going to be back. Um, it's a little bit bigger, but you guys didn't miss me for the last five and I was around for this five. And so, yeah, I think, um, I think it's time. I'll see you guys in a a decade. Uh, and then he just kind of dipped. So now standing here and of course, like the, the earth and everything have like grown under you. What is it? What is it? What, what happens when you come out of your, of your state? I think, uh, being, yeah. Um, this is the first time where I've been here for so long that I think as Gazric comes out previously, the the golem just like slugs off of him um, where it just sort of like now it's debris and rock around the area. But since being a level 20 archduid, one of the things I, I realized also is I don't need somatic or material components from casting spells. So I guess I just generate them. And so in the golem form like that's what's happening is the mountain is building as i'm just generating magical material that is supporting itself uprighting itself um i think it's the first time where gosrick wakes up in darkness in the heart of the mountain um because yeah it, like before the sun would peek through in some capacity to wake him and i think it takes him a moment to realize he's not a golem anymore almost uh the rock has been heated through from the sun for so long where he still feels its warmth and the lack of sight is not new in some way shape or form when you can just feel the earth's rotation um i think also yeah dahani having this new relationship with the energy in her and in the world knows god's knows before anybody well aside from Gazric that yeah. Gosric is awake because mm-hmm. she can feel that energy moving through the stone. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, and uh, <laughs> I think she, 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 she's sitting there having, you know, having snacks or whatever with everybody. Mm-hmm. And then there's just like this awareness. And then, Oh dude, how's he going to get out of that? Oh, <laughs> and Gosric's, then... awake. Gosric's awake. <laughs> yeah. God, God's awake. Oh. Um, We're... <laughs> Virgil just leans over to Kent and says, "Oh, I guess Shaka got the math right." Yeah. Not that there was any doubt. Damn, damn! No. I was really hoping we would get to just once. He needs to be wrong on the math. <laughs> mm-hmm. just, just once. Um, and you see, uh, in a moment, I think Tani probably hears it first from a crevice and crack of the like actual rock structure. You see a tiny like squirrel head pop out. Uh, and like all the other squirrels go to surround it um and as it like steps up on top of the rock i wild shape out of it oh i love it and like moses coming out of the cave <laughs> i've got rocks around me a long sure. long beard we we introduced 
religion into this episode. Sure. And okay. I'm going to run with it. What cave? Uh, We're not talking about it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll talk about this afterwards. It's fine. Uh, with my stone commandments. Um, <laughs> no, Gazric, uh stretches, reaches out. His beard is now like fully all the way down to his feet um from uh like from his face all the way down his hat is the only visual part of clothing that's still there and it's kind of like rotten a little bit but somehow you see like holes that like a spider will crawl out of and then immediately like silk it shut um and like his his clothes are made of now patchworks of material goods like from the earth that are like closing any of the time signs of wear and tear mm -hmm. um any i just look around and i say oh hey guys um heaven interrupts you and says what what oh, do that again what? i'm sorry oh noise reduction <laughs> he says no no, no 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 what what's the matter he puts up a little finger at you and looks very stern, turns to the rivals and says, May I present <laughs> the man of the mountain, everyone's favorite socialist construct, Arch Druid Gazric. I've really insisted that they don't need to do that, but thank you, Kevin. I really appreciate it. I have been preparing for a decade for that. I, I, I know, and and honestly, I thank your great grandfather for teaching you the words. Thanks, Pap. Mm -hmm. Oh, crackle, crackle. Uh, but okay, so I'm here. Uh, who's back? Is there another dragon on the case? Is there uh, the Xanathar return? Uh, what is Lair now a big bad enemy? What's going on? Do you, do you know how long it's been, guys? So it's um, it's, um... <laughs> good. Three thousand six hundred and fifty days. Good, good job. Good job. Apparently, no leap days in mm. the Forgotten Rights. I guess make, no. No, no, no. I, not, I, with I guess... the, not with the uh, with that calendar. Let me tell you. That was a lot of, yeah. that was no, a lot of ten days. Yeah, yeah. Every 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 couple of ten days, there's an eleven day in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deeply confusing. Guys, <laughs> um, we're we're sitting here having snacks. Oh, you guys need to carbo load before the fight. I understand. Don't worry about me. I've been absorbing nutrients and energy. And I spit out like an earthworm from the earth yeah. for a while now. I, I'm i good to go. I mean, I I could... Uh, let me just keep stretching a little bit. Uh, guys, are, probably... we're, just, we're just here to say hi. Everything's fine. And you I'll realize... Kent. You realize as you look at the faces of your friends, like... There is no consternation. There is yeah. no stress. They're, they just look like they're, you know, Dahani said, like, they're just eating snacks. Oh. They're all there. Very clearly, they're there for you. So you got that right. But mm -hmm. there's no sign of trouble on their faces. Oh. Well, I, I'm, well, I appreciate you guys then talking to me about whatever Nimrod's business needs to be handled and uh, whatever. No, we're 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 just here to just put a smile on your face, and then Shaka pulls out a little container of ice spider, yes, uh, yes. ice spider stew that he is he has made. So yes. I don't know how good it'll be, Ooh. but he has made it himself. He's not wow. gone to Leaf or anything for wow. instructions, and he. Hands it, and he hands it toward Gosrick and said, hope this makes you happy. Shaka? Yes. Uh, give me a nature or survival check. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah let's go. Hell yeah. yeah. Your yeah, choice. I was, yeah, I was like, I probably should roll. <laughs> so nice. You get to choose. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, do a nature roll. Oh, 13. Oh, you okay. know. Is this your first time making this? <laughs> Not to be rude, hear. because I I I, I think uh, uh, yeah I th I think it's my first time having someone that knows what it should taste like taste it. Sure, sure. sure. Right. Uh, I think you're a little high on the smoked paprika, but other than that, you're really nailing 
everything in this. Wait, this there's is... supposed to be smoked paprika in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My guy, it's the only thing. The heat counteracts the ice spider. You got, you oh, need, man. you need some of that. Cur- uh, if you can get Hungarian, you can get not Hungarian. Sorry. <laughs> it's really yeah, about to go. Like, Are you reading you? Dracula right no! now? No. <laughs> what the heck? I have hot Hungarian paprika. It's the best thing for Shushuka. It actually, talk no, about it's it really Jack. good. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Incredible. Uh, and out of nowhere, Sleeves just hand you a bottle of paprika. Uh, <laughs> yes. Always yeah. ready with the spice. Always came yeah. with the seasoning. Oh, this always. Right. You know us. Paprika. Look, her people, her you know people us. would not be caught. That's right. Would not be caught without um, some seasonings on mm-hmm. her person. I love it. Uh oh wow. Okay. Um thank you for all being here. And this soup is delicious. I mm, I really I like finish it before I realize it. Oh man, I was hungrier than I thought. Um, let me uh, let, let me help. Um, and I uh, just cast a really powerful wither and bloom. Um, oh, cool! Where mm-hmm. some like trees sprout up and like some like fruit just like drops at her feet. Um, there's a like a little calf runs up a goat. And it ages really fast. And oh like, Felice, if you want to murder that now, what? that's what totally happened? fine. Uh, Kent goes over and very and very quickly uh, slaughters the goat for us and says, Thank a you. few things have changed. Oh, okay. So yeah, what the... Mm, I feel like the earth really hasn't uh, changed. No, something is different. Huh. People are calmer. Yeah. I like to think so. Wow. It's been good. A lot has happened. Yeah. There's there's not a level of heightened like cortisol in the air that I'm smelling. There's no there's no extreme stress on the horizon. I mean, just from the storm that will be here in about two weeks. But the, I mean those the seagulls will be fine from that. Um it's, I have a question. It's been good, Gosrick. It's, it's been fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you, is there any form of? Um, I'm assuming you're in some sort of hibernation type state. Is there any any form of, I guess, what we'd call a dream or a? Is, mm. is is there anything that you can recall from that cave? Yeah. No. 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 I'm uh, when. It, it, it is a it's it, it's a deep meditative positioning I go into. At this point, I don't really need I my magics can generate the things that I need to sustain my existence. Um and since Shalt, I've haven't felt really a drain on most of my abilities. I mean, I can tire myself out, but I'm not going to like run out of my magic in a day anymore. Um so when I when I am the mountain thanks kevin um i just close my eyes and i think of it often if you've has, has, has any of you all um has anyone stood naked in the field with your eyes closed or is that just a druid thing obviously okay That's okay okay, okay yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely so, so, okay it's, uh, imagine closing your yeah. eyes and standing naked in the field and every hair on your body is now the, your sensory organ, the thing that gives you information, the thing that devises the world around you, the wind, the grazing, the moisture. Um, and he like reaches down and touches a slab of rock. This is my hairy arm. The moss that grows on here, the, the worms that run through. Uh, this is what catches the winds. When I have goosebumps, it causes an avalanche. Um, and I'm aware of those things, but often it's, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's just, um, if anything, honestly, I felt like I, I was only gone for like, like, oh my God, my hands, uh, it, it felt like maybe eight hours of sleep sometimes. That's a long eight hours. That's a great eight hours, man. Let me tell you, I've never felt more rested. Is that why you do it? I mean, I, I've been thinking about what it means to be 
here. In one instant, Laryl um, used their, mauer, uh, their power and magic to create something that serves the people of Waterdeep on a greater level mm. than any of my magic or power did prior. An unending source of food and water without any sort of constraint. Like, I, I thought about the programs. I thought about the initiatives. I thought about the things that I tried to push through to take care of the stuff and the amount of masked lords nonsense that it took to try even get anything across it. I figured it might be better to just be here with the Kevins support this community in a way that I could. Um, and now that Nimrods is in a way is self-sustaining, uh, just let it do its thing. Um, how are the duos? They're good. They're duoing? They're, 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 duo they're, they're duoing. duoing. Incredible. I mean, is he and their, their competency has at least doubled since both of them have been working together? I mean... <laughs> Troll Skull is... It's it's managing really well. You you set them up for success. Mm. Gosric, the reason that we wanted to visit mm -hmm. and have us all here is that based on how long you've been going and becoming the mountain, it feels like the next time you come out of it we may not be able to see you again. This is, this is a kindness that you have offered me. Um, one that I am very grateful for. I could not be what I am or what I've achieved without the arrivals and I will cherish our time together until it is time for me to go back. And we do. The rivals have, spend. Oh, please, yes, no, please, yeah. Just hand it to me when you have a, a what right before, because there's one thing I uh, do it I now. Just wanted, okay, do it now. At the end, when you all come back to the mountain, <clears throat> um. I won't be here to say goodbye to you, and it feels a shame in the way that you all won't be properly able to say goodbye to me at the end of your times. So I um, offer you a subtle gift, and I take out the, um, I reach into my beard which is now filled with components of spells I don't need and, nice. and over time. Mm -hmm. Very gross. Um, I pull out my finger <laughs> and I cast ah! and I cast true resurrection on it. Oh, from the spell from the spell jammer season, I lost a finger. Yeah. And yeah. It back. yeah. <laughs> um, and in this moment, a Gosric appears before you, not level 20 not sort of at this moment um and we look at each other and i kind of just like put my forehead on his he will be with you as you need things in the space he is me and i am him i you know a little less calm a little more agitated but otherwise i i, I figured out where i'm going and that feels really cool yeah, man, it's going to be a wild journey. Um, but I... I know that I won't be there for the end of theirs. So I trust you to look after them. And I trust you to take care of them. And when you are done and you wish to come to the mountain, we'll do like a like a timeshare thing. We'll do a swapsies uh, <laughs> and we'll work it out. Yeah, man, that sounds cool. Uh, sounds great. What should we call? Uh, what should we call you? Well, it's Gosric. You're not Gosric. You, you, do we call you Gosric? I mean, technically, he's 
true. It's it, he is Gosling. I know, but <laughs> we'll workshop some stuff. We Shaq. already we'll look. We already let, it out. <laughs> we let both the duos be duo. I, yeah, I yeah. think we're probably just getting into the weeds now. Can you at least? Can you at least make his hat a different color? Yes. <laughs> and you know what? No. I will make my own hat a different color. <laughs> no, that's and not. you can call me Rizgas. Oh, is that no. look good? What a is good that, is that Steve? No. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. 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 No. And so I, I this is such a weird <laughs> moment, but I we gotta move a little bit forward. So just to say so sorry. no, I love it. So <laughs> we uh Gosric constructs again. And it takes some getting used to for the rest of us to have absolutely undoubtedly without distinction or question Gosric with us. Mm -hmm. But also, but also it is, it's, it's he, and he continues to say it isn't weird, but we know. And every now and again, I assume each of us in our own time visits the mountain shit. Yeah. Thank you. You did it to us. I did. <laughs> Take it, you dick. <laughs> and then, oh, sh yeah, no, I did it to myself. Thanks. That's great. Um, we do. And the rivals sort of leave Gosric, new Gosric, in the hand of the duos. And there's sort of a it's interesting how the duos and Brian have sort of become now more teachers than students to this Gosric to make sure that things at Troll Skull do continue. And I do think that for. Wow. Okay. Now I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going for what remains. Gosh, how can I, how God, why did I do this to myself <laughs> for what remains of each of the rivals journeys we probably come back to visit even though you know we've talked to shaka we we know that gosrick's next time to come out of the mountain isn't for quite some time yeah um and i'd like to think that we sit there and, and we still talk you know we, we see kevin kevin sees us it's really not a whole lot to talk to a squirrel about so we just talk to Gosric has the mountain. I think at moments you feel him talking back with the leaf landing uh, on you when you laugh deeply, with um, an acorn landing when someone insults his cooking. Uh, Gosric speaks back. And we remain that way visiting on occasion appreciating the gosric that we have at one point kent and virgil come up together to visit carrying a not the trunk but a trunk a, a little a small little box really more than a trunk and they sit for some time they spend the night actually and when they leave they come back to Troll Skull and the little box isn't with them. Gosric, time passes. And at times you recognize the centuries as they are. And at times it's like a nap. 500 years after you said goodbye to the rivals, you awake again. And you do a little bit of math and you figure out how long it's been and you have a look at Waterdeep. And you notice differences. There are a few new additions to the skyline. There are vehicles constructed in ways that are much more reminiscent of Rival and the things that you saw in space than you're used to here. But all in all, not much has changed. At least it doesn't seem so. And so you spend whatever time you spend there, uh, either in Waterdeep or exploring the, the forests with Kevin 747th. 
and then you sleep again, or you hibernate again, or whatever we're calling it, construct again. And a thousand more years pass. And what, Gazric? I mean, we don't have to ruminate on what a thousand years means, but Gazric has spent more than a millennium constructing, contemplating. Waterdeep is different now. A lot is different, but it's mm -hmm. still there. The city is there. What does Gazric do? What is, is it, is it more? Is it more hibernating? I think it's, um, there's honestly a moment where there, after a thousand years, I think he forgets that Gosric was ever not a mountain mm. in some ways, mm -hmm. still holding on to the memories, the meanings. And we see this, um, the one time water deep happens to be threatened by, Mm. something some meteor some dragon something coming out hurtling towards the city yeah and the mountain moves to catch it yeah and i think that then inspires a set of people to then treat the mountain as an like a hunting like a like a treasure mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. to try to fight and so there's a while where i'm just beating adventurers up um like a giant stone talus yeah Been a lot of tears of kingdom yeah ah! yep yep yeah yeah, yeah. Um, let people mine off me if they need me. That's fine. But no one's getting my heart. Um, except for maybe the one budding du druid who, who 2,000 years later, finds a way to, like, crawl to the center. Um, yeah. And by that time, everything is different. Mm -hmm. Water deep is barely recognizable but there water deep is somehow and maybe it's the fountain maybe it's what it represents but water deep seems about as eternal as you at this point mm -hmm. and when this druid finally gets in and finds you what do you do do you wake do you acknowledge oh you do okay there it is <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Oh. Let me make you some stew. The terrified druid <laughs> is, just nods. Mm -hmm. And you make some stew and you talk and you, well, you mostly, I think, listen, mm -hmm. at least at first, as this druid tells you about the world. Mm -hmm. And... There are a great many surprising things, both good and bad. But one thing that sticks out to you is that after 2,500 years, this druid doesn't mention anything about the rivals of Waterdeep. And that's when you remember a box. That 2,000, no, 2,500 years ago. Stop it. Kent and Virgil left with you. <clears throat> and you never opened it, but something now tells you you should. And inside that box, give me one second. I understand, but fuck you for waiting me. I'm I'm really yeah, I'm no. at the edge of my goddamn <laughs> no. seat. I really hope he's going to get a prop. Uh inside that box is a book. And on the inside front cover of the book, The Rivals of Waterdeep. Tales of Shaka, Salise, Tahani, Kent, Virgil. Gazric, Ash, Knock Knock. Oh, crap. Now I got to remember everybody's names. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Help. Johnny D. 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 Johnny
Perrin. Everybody start counting. Um, Rin. Yeah. Uh, Rin and Perrin. Yeah. Perrin. Yeah. And you open the book, and there it all is. Every fight, every trip, every argument, every gold piece found. And you look to this druid, Gazrek, who doesn't know any of this. And I like to imagine, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but there is a joy after all these years without your friends of getting to share them again. And that's where we'll leave it for this week. You're terrible. Ugh. Yeah, everybody gets some, um, oh. yeah, it's very dusty in here. Yeah. Um, it's just very dusty. For the record, uh, <laughs> we roasted me last season for not crying. I hate you. I really hate you now. So I was like, oh, I'm not crying. It doesn't happen. It doesn't uh -huh. happen to these things. It's not a toxic masculinity thing. I just wish I could do it. <laughs> I'm going to come over and punch you so you cry. Thank you. <laughs> I am my therapist and I will agree that that's the yeah, way. That's oh, my <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, you so guys. much. Thank you all of you. Honestly, we, you know, we did a lot this episode and we're mm. trying to, we're trying to do what we can so that we can tell oh, people God. stories. But yeah, um, it was a special hand for both of us to try and tell Gosrix in that way. So. Um, and yeah. if you feel bad now, don't worry. We're going to annihilate you next episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Wow. Oh, God. Wow. Thanks. Thanks for the pressure, Brian. You're welcome. I'm here. Hey, look, like, you know, you have, you have, you have all of our knowledge and wisdom to throw at um, our lovely, lovely viewers who we do appreciate. And we are not paying for your tissues. No, no. You got to provide that on your own. Well. Uh. <laughs> Oh. oh, goodness. Thank you all so much for hanging out. We got one more for you. Two weeks time, same time, same place. 1 Ugh. p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, uh, right here for for the last one. Uh, thank you all. Don't say it like that. Oh. Right. Oh. <laughs> we'll see you on June 11th for the four year anniversary. Of the, five. the first How? five. Five. Yeah. Anniversary of the very first episode yeah. of Rivals. It might oh come back, so we're not going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> well, June 1st is our episodes. actual anniversary. Right. I was going to say, we tried to get as close as we possibly yeah. could. Yeah. yeah. The next episode um, is 2,500 years. Dang. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. <laughs> I mean, that's, so that's... play one of your kids like that. Like that's the future, right? I mean, yeah. Latia and I already have, and it was great. So. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much to our Indiegogo uh, supporters yes. in particular, oh because this is why we wanted, you know, to be able to finish out our stories on our terms. Yeah. So thank you so much for that. Thank you to our cry all over y'all. You know, yeah, that's, that's it. pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to our Patreon supporters. We're going to be going and doing uh, our after show cool. after this, and you all will get access to that very shortly. Uh, what else? We are a little bit over time, which we do apologize for, but we would love to make sure that you know who everyone was who brought this these lovely moments together so let's go around uh i'm gonna start so it ends on us i'll start with tanya great oh great hi sorry uh, that's okay <laughs> i'm still emotionally compromised um <laughs> i'm tanya at cypher tier i play sleaze historio you're now level 20 redemption paladin um uh cypher tier we're on the internet Tomorrow's a holiday, so I'll be getting back to Tears of the Kingdom whenever I like get up and feed myself and and then enjoy the fact it's a holiday and I'll have to work. Mm -hmm. Um and other than that, streaming mostly in the mornings, making games the rest of the time of the day. And yeah, I I need to go cry. That's what I'm gonna go do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And well, yeah, so that exasperated yeah means we're gonna go over to Latia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool, great. Hi, I'm Latia Jaquise, uh, your level 20 way of mercy monk now. Whoa, weird, fun. Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter. God, my, you can hear it all in my yeah. nose. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Latia Jaquise. You can catch me every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific uh, at twitch.tv slash ddbeyond where uh, we do stuff. Um, and then you'll see me here on the 11th. Uh, I also need to go uh, cry because 
I was so looking forward to this episode and I don't regret it for an instant. No. But uh, Brian and Eugenio are monsters. Real mean. I mean, we did win like, you know, evil DM award. It's it's fine. No. Sorry. Moving along, Masood, how how are you not crying up there? I'm 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 surviving. I I, I don't know if you all really saw how <laughs> watery my eyes got in the middle of that. And I, I just like having a moment. Yeah, congratulations. Um uh, hey. I'm Masood Huck. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Marudboy M A H R U D B O I. I played both Gothic Nomads, the Socialist Businessman and the Druid Construct. So I covered that. Uh so you can <laughs> catch up with what I'm doing on my Instagram and Twitter. And I'm gonna be back in two weeks with these wonderful human beings. Uh, and I can't wait. Oops, this yeah. one. Sharif. Yeah, um, I'm Sharif. Uh, you can find me at Sharifjackson.com, S H A R E E F jackson.com and sharif jackson on all social networks and yeah one more episode um i'm really looking forward to it also sad about it um you know it's it's uh it's good to leave things on our own terms i'm looking forward i'm looking forward to that and yeah what a great job on this episode yeah incredible we'll talk about the handups in the post show but that was the thing i kept going. like truly the way the way you all bounced back and forth was beautiful <laughs> Uh, oh, it's me now. Hi, everybody. I'm Eugenio. I'm DM Jazzy Hands. Uh, I stream on my channel a couple of times a week uh, and more than a couple uh, coming up into the summer. Uh, once this show is done, I am I'm done with actual play shows. Familiar Quest is, is done. Last yeah. Refuge is done. Rivals is going to be done. So uh, this summer is going to be a summer of of streaming on my channel. So come by, hang out, support me for the summer and, uh, you know, watch me scream in terror at video games. I don't know. Uh, and I have been very happy to be Kent, your now 20th level uh, College of Spirits Bard. Uh, he has become the storyteller and uh, took Rin's book and fixed it. And that is the book that Gazrak has. Uh, oh, I've got an after show note about, note about that too. But <laughs> oh no, okay. I'm excited about that. <laughs> um, yeah, and hi, I have been your other co-DM, Brian, um, aka Urban Bohemian, pretty much everywhere on the internet. You can catch me on my own Twitch channel um, Tuesday coming up. And then... Um, Catch um, me on social media. I am taking next weekend off of streaming, uh, but there are you will hear from me about other things on social media and Discord as they pop up. June, uh, like you like know, I do not have any more actual play shows after this. I am going to look at June as taking a break and saying no. As much as I would love to be on your thing, I'm going to say no, and that's just <laughs> self care. So there, right you. I say to myself now, <laughs> and now it's on. Now it's on video, so I can't not. You know, there you go. And anyone um, who's watching who's trying to book Someone clip this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And, then, and then contact me. And <laughs> I, will, I will defend Brian and maybe take a spot on the shows. I, don't I was know. gonna say you I should absolutely, know. you should absolutely <laughs> the the amount of the amount of beauty that Masood has spun that we threw to him. You should definitely hire him for your actual place. Um, however, thank you. I this yeah, I did not even expect to get this emotional and I helped write it. So <laughs> um we are um we do not really have time for questions. I do apologize. No, we had to go a little long, um, but you know, feel free. We have a Twitter account, Rivals Waterdeep on Twitter. Feel free to throw some questions at us. Um, we will do our best to answer them as for our characters. And yeah, we will see you in two weeks, two weeks? for the, I'm not, next I can't episode. say next it. Yes, episode. it is the next episode. It's episode two... 12. <laughs> um, and before we do, we are going to say once again, thank you to our Indiegogo supporters. It is because of you that we get mm. to do this, mm. tell our story, have these amazing moments, and then have an after show where we probably all emotionally just dump. So, just dump. you know, it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> but but thank you. We will say thank you to you with a quick slide um, and Absolutely. hang out because we are going to raid. Uh, do we decide? Mm, you're oh, muted. You are oh, muted, Tanya. Excellent. So please. Um, Coder Girl hang. Chan. Coder Girl, Coder Girl Chan. Chan. That's it. Cool. Hang out. Stick around for the raid. Uh, we will see you in two weeks. Everyone be good. Bye. Bye, y'all.